Yo, 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 what's going on, everybody? This is your boy, LB The Realist, with Surrealistic Studios, Surreal News, where the real is surreal. Thank you for joining me on this video. So, I actually got to catch the debates last night. I was unaware that the debates were coming up so soon, but I happened to click on YouTube, and lo and behold, ABC was airing the debate on YouTube. So, I watched. Now, the, se the first time I watched it, I just finished the second time, but the first time I watched it, I caught it, like halfway through so I only got to see the last half of it uh, this morning I tried to catch more of it um, I watched it again from the beginning I you know skipped through all the bullshit in the beginning and I got straight to the debates and I was able to watch it and I had a, I had a few points that I wanted to discuss in this short video um, I won't make this one too long. We'll just keep it short and sweet and get right to the point. All right, 56, 7, 58, 59, one minute into it. All right, here we go. So I think Bernie Sanders, I think he did well. I think that a lot of us Bernie Sanders supporters, we really want him to hit hard and we want him to go after Joe Biden. We want him to attack Elizabeth Warren. We want him to, you know, really solidify his his position as front runner in this Democratic uh, primary. But unfortunately, you know, that's just not who Bernie Sanders is. So we have to accept what we get, you know, like. Uh, he did attack, he did go after Pete in one instance, and that instance, he was saying how he doesn't accept money from billionaires and, and, and big money interest, and in which he said, he turned to Pete and said, Pete, you know, as if I'm talking to you, Pete Buttigieg, you know, so I, I thought that that was pretty cool. I actually applauded at that moment when Bernie Sanders called out Mayor Pete by name and Pete's defense to that was basically his defense was the same as Elizabeth Warren's defense in which she says she doesn't believe in unilateral disarmament his defense was hey look uh, Donald Trump is going to be raising all of this money you know he's 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 already raised 25 million dollars today he was referring to the uh, debate night which was yesterday so his defense is Donald Trump has all this money and all this uh, financial backing behind him. Why would we as Democrats kneecap ourselves by not providing ourselves with as much money and, and financial uh, capital as, as possible in order to beat Donald Trump? The reason why I don't agree with that point, it, it seems like a good point on, on its face, right? The reason why I don't agree is didn't Hillary Clinton outspend Donald Trump by like 20 mil am I is my memory not I could be mistaken if I'm mistaken let me know in the comment section below it happens but didn't she outspend Donald Trump in 2016 in, in the past election I believe if my recollection is correct I believe I heard that she outspent Donald Trump and she still lost now mind you given she did get what three million more votes or something like that, two, two, three million more votes. So she won the popular vote. But we have something called the Electoral College. Call it Democratic, call it undemocratic, but we have it. And they gave it to Donald Trump. Her victory in, in the popular vote wasn't enough to overcome President Donald Trump, the reality TV show host, the clown that is an orange face. You know, like, it wasn't enough. So, Pete Buttigieg, his point is moot. It doesn't matter how much money. Well, you know, money does matter. I mean, I'm not living in a total fairyland, but what matters most importantly is the message, the message behind the candidate. And quite frankly, I don't see what Pete Buttigieg is, I don't see what his message is. You know, it just it, it doesn't make sense to me. So Bernie Sanders slammed Pete on that one. Amy Klobuchar uh, also took shots at Pete. Um, Elizabeth Warren, I believe, took shots at Pete. Everyone was taking shots at Pete because they see Pete surging. We all know what happened with the Iowa caucus in which, you know, it's total chaos. They released 100% of the reporting 
uh, and they and Pete Buttigieg ex, edged out Bernie Sanders by one delegate. One delegate. He got 13. Bernie Sanders got 12. So everybody's going after Pete Buttigieg right now. I think Pete Buttigieg did a, a he did an okay job holding his own. He did an okay job holding his own. Um, you know, in regards to the the crowd, the crowd's involvement in debates. You know, we all know that. Excuse me. We all know that the crowd is filled with, you know, uh, Bernie surrogates and Pete Buttigieg supporters and um, you know people that are close to the campaign. So it, it's pockets and groups of, you know, your a certain group of your supporters there. So you can't just look at the audience or listen to the audience's reactions as verification of how well a certain candidate did. You really have to look at the polling after the fact. So that's what I'm waiting for. I'm waiting for polling to be released after this uh, New Hampshire debate to see how well the candidates did. In my opinion, I think Bernie Sanders um, had a good night. I think Pete Buttigieg, like I said, had an okay night. I think actually Tom Steyer had a great night. Let me talk about Tom Steyer. Tom Steyer is a billionaire who basically, he's one of the billionaires besides Michael Bloomberg who basically bought his way onto the debate stage. But I must admit, Tom Steyer is sounding really good. He's sounding really good when he speaks on black issues. He says that, that you know, in my own words, you know, I'm paraphrasing, but he said that he, we have to repair the damages that were done in the past. You know, we can't move on properly as a country until we have a reckoning, a reckoning, you know, um, of what happened during slavery, what happened with Jim Crow, with Black Wall Street. We really have to have a reckoning. There's no official apology, you know, for what had happened, you know, and we're just supposed to move on and everyone loves to tell black people we'll just forget about it it happened in the past you weren't a slave i wasn't a slave master so then that's it but it's more than just the issue of being a slave in america like i said there's being a slave in america there's the jim crow laws you know what i'm saying there's actual there were actual laws on the books preventing you know people of color from voting or you know, there was laws on the books called slave codes, you know, that actually, you know, we weren't people <laughs> in this country some years back. And the years following that, you know, things got gradually better, but we're still suffering from the institutional racism and slavery that built this country. Black people are still suffering, and Tom Steyer, from what I from what I see, you know, aside from Tulsi Gabbard, she wasn't on the debate stage last night, um, but he's the only one bringing up these issues. You know, uh, uh, Joaquin uh, Castro brought it up before he dropped out of the race. Um, uh, Beto O'Rourke, O'Rourke had, I believe, mentioned reparations. And of course, we have Marianne Williamson, who um, who famously speaks on reparations. So, aside from the fact that um, Tom Steyer bought his way onto the debate stage, I actually appreciated his words in regards to that, because no one else on that debate stage is willing to go there. Not even Bernie Sanders. Not even Bernie Sanders. You know, uh, Andrew Yang is willing to talk about universal basic income, but that's that's where it ends and begins that's where it begins and ends with Andrew Yang yeah I haven't heard uh, too much about reparations from Andrew Yang it's really just UBI which is good you know I, I love the idea of UBI even though I don't particularly agree with his version of it because I don't think that a person that's on EBT or uh, assistance general assistance I don't think that they should have to choose between their assistance and UBI, I believe if it's universal, then just keep it universal. Then, yeah, you can have your universal basic income just like everyone else. And if you so happen to need extra help, we have these assistance programs for you. You know, I don't think there's anything wrong with that in a capitalistic uh, country where we have homeless people 
we have half a million homeless people in this country and we're the richest, most powerful country in the history of all rich and powerful countries. It makes absolutely no sense. So I think Andrew Yang had a, he didn't really have a great night. I wouldn't even particularly say that he had a good night. I would just say he was just, he was just there. <laughs> he was, he was just there. You know, a lot of times I feel like these candidates should be a lot more aggressive with how they interact with these moderators and how they answer questions. You know, I don't understand why they sit there with raising their hands or Bernie Sanders doing the pinchy claw thing, trying to get people's attention. You're running for the most powerful seat in all of the United States of America. Act like a president. I didn't feel as though that some of these people were acting very presidential. Like a Amy Klobuchar, her voice alone is enough to make me roll my goddamn eyes because I, d I cannot see her as the leader of the free world. I just cannot see Amy Klobuchar having the, the audacity to fight for what's right in this country. Like, I don't believe that she has it in her, you know. Um, Andrew Yang, I believe, has a lot of great ideas, but... He has to bring out those ideas. He's very, he's very much stuck on his UBI. And it's almost it's almost like a joke at this point where every time he starts to talk, it's like he reminds me of a game show host. You know? So I, that irritates me. And it's not very presidential, I don't in my opinion. Um don't even get me started on Elizabeth Warren. I mean, I can't believe that Elizabeth Warren has the support that she does. And people actually believe, they actually believe that Elizabeth Warren is somebody with enough audacity enough to fight for them. And she's proved so many times before that, that that's not the case. She was nowhere to be found on Standy Rock when it truly mattered. Even though she liked to call herself a Native American, liked to say that she was uh, part Indian, like that. I just don't understand. I don't understand how you could do that, but not show your face when it counts. I don't understand why people think Elizabeth Warren will fight for them when Donna Brazile from the DNC uh, a couple years back came out and straight up said that the, the, the DNC was rigged in favor of Hillary Clinton. They had a whole contract that stated that she would be given control of all these different aspects of the DNC. She said it was rigged and then Elizabeth Warren went out there said it was rigged and then a few days later tried to walk it up a backpedal and try to say well no 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 rig is a strong word i don't want to say rig you just said rigged you can't say rigged and then not say rigged you said it <laughs> you said it the first time you can't say well i said it but i didn't mean it no you meant it because you said it nobody says that the the system is rigged if you don't mean it on the news and in, in public on record so that lets me know everything I need to know about Elizabeth Warren. She's, she's, uh, you know, she's all raw, raw, and pointing her fingers and wagging her fingers at Wall Street executives and and all of this shit. But that's it. That's it. Somebody, please, in the comments section, give me verifiable facts that I could use to support uh, Elizabeth Warren because I'm just not seeing the evidence. I'm not. I know she did the Consumer Protection Bureau. Other than that, I don't know what she is good for. I just really don't. I really don't. So I, I don't think Elizabeth Warren did exponentially well last night. I think that she had she made some pretty good points, though. I will admit, she made some pretty good points that got you know good reaction out of the crowd and will most likely get a good reaction out of the people at home watching. But she didn't really say anything that was uh, that profound, at least in my opinion, that is. Now... Like I said, I only got to watch the, the the second half of the debates last night. I caught it, you know, right when it was going on. Today, um, I'm at work, but I, I, I tr I've I just finished watching it again. But again, like I'm, I'm at work, so I'm halfway paying attention and I'm halfway not, you know, because I'm, you know, I'm on a break right now. But I'm going to watch it again just to fully comprehend everything and all of the questions. And I'll probably come back on another video to discuss but that is my general reaction of the New Hampshire debates last night. Um, Pete Buttigieg has been surging ever since the Iowa 
uh, chaos in which the media basically declared him the winner. Um, and like I said, he did get one more delegate than Bernie. I don't see how that's possible being that they're only a point, a percentage point, like literally point one. He's point one ahead of Bernie Sanders, but somehow he has a whole nother delegate. I don't pretend to be a math surgeon and I don't really get how they got that number, but all right, whatever, whatever. Somebody explain to me in the comment section, how does Pete Buttigieg get one more delegate than Bernie Sanders, even though they're like a 0.1 percentage apart? That doesn't make any sense to me. But anyways, he's been surging. Um, the media has been helping him. So Pete Buttigieg is back on the rise. And let me tell you right now, if we have a, a Pete Buttigieg versus a Donald Trump, I'm going to go ahead and make my prediction now. Donald Trump will be the president in 2020. Again, he will win the election if he goes up against Pete Buttigieg. We don't trust the Pete, all right? But we can't even pronounce his last name. If we can't pronounce your last name, God damn it, you can't be president. That should be a that should be a law. That should be a that should be a law. <laughs> we have to be able to pronounce your name. If we can't pronounce your name, you can't be president. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We cannot have a president, but I'm sorry. We already have a president Trump. That is enough. All right, so let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. I'm going to end this video now. It's coming up on 60, 17 minutes now. Like this video if you like. Share it. Like I said, comment below. And subscribe to me if you haven't before so we can keep up this conversation. <sighs> go Bernie Sanders. Go Tulsi Gabbard. You know, it's sad that she wasn't in the debate, but, you know, this is what it is. Hopefully, this is my hope and another, I guess, prediction. I noticed that Tom Steyer was giving Bernie Sanders a lot of praise last night. He agreed uh, He agrees with Bernie on climate change. He agreed with, with Bernie on, on so many issues, and he made that very public last night. So my prediction, my hopes, my advice to Mr. Steyer is, since you agree so much with Bernie Sanders, why don't you go ahead and do yourself a favor, do me a favor, do the country a favor, drop out of the presidential race and endorse him. Drop out. You said you made a point that you have all this black support in, in, in southern states like South Carolina. So why don't you go ahead, drop out of the presidential race and endorse Bernie Sanders. That way he gets the support. You get what you want because all you really care about is climate change and climate justice and, and justice for African-Americans, right? So does Bernie. In regard, um, maybe you could kind of twist his arm on the reparations aspect. You know, maybe you can kind of get in his ear about that. And I, I think that you should definitely do that. But I think you should definitely drop out of the race and endorse Bernie Sanders. Uh, same goes for Elizabeth Warren, if we're on that one. Um, yeah, Elizabeth Warren, you should go ahead and uh, drop out of the race and endorse Bernie Sanders for president. Uh, uh, same for you, John Biden. We need you to go ahead and drop out of this presidential race and go ahead and endorse Bernie Sanders. Since you guys are all such close friends, we're going to need you to go ahead and do that. ASAP because it's time to go against Trump. We that unity shit. It's time to unify the party. So do us all a favor, do the country a favor, and unify behind Bernie Sanders. Alright? Until next time, I'm out, peoples. Much love.